Okay, so this is an intro to human papillomavirus, which we will be reading a paper about. Um, HPV, as it is more full, uh, informally referred to, is a class one double-stranded DNA virus. You can see up here, it has a circular genome. And what's really interesting too is that um, this virus wraps its um, um, genome around cellular histone proteins to kind of keep it organized um, in the capsid. There are about, or at least, 120 types of HPV. So a few that we will be talking about are like HPV PV 16, HPV 18. Um, so in the reading I gave you, there's lots of lists of um, different HPV virus types, um, which means they have um, slightly different uh, genetic information, um, and a lot of the different types are based on this capsid protein. So that means that your body, uh, if it has antibodies to HP, HPV 16, it's not going to have antibodies to HPV 18. So um, that's important when we talk in a little bit about vaccines. Um, there are also alpha, beta, and gamma um, subtypes. Um, the one um, that we'll be talking about most are the alpha subtypes. These infect um, mucosal membranes, and um, so these include the sexually transmitted HPVs um, and the high-risk HPVs. Um, these are the ones that potentially could cause cancer. Um, the beta is the cutaneous, so these are mainly the wart-causing HPVs. Um, and then the other ones are gamma, which we don't seem to worry about too much. Uh, this is um, a representation of the virus. It's about 60 nanometers in size, so it's actually pretty small. Um, remember polio is 30 nanometers. Ebola is about 80 nanometers for the width. Um, influenza is around 120 nanometers. Um, so HPV is a fairly um, small virus. It's naked, so no envelope. Its genome, you can see, is about 8,000 base pairs, um, and it only encodes eight genes. So there's the E, or early, genes, and these ones are involved in um, regulation of uh, DNA replication and transcription. L is for the late and these are the capsid or the structural genes. And what I outlined here is the capsid is made of 72 pentamers. And so what I've outlined in the little bit of darker blue is the five um, L1 proteins. And then inside each of those pentamers is um, um, L2. So that's the capsid. Um, structure. So human papillomavirus um, mainly causes warts and sometimes can cause cancer. Um, so this is showing you some of the different sites of infection and um, the diseases caused. Um, we're going to talk about um, cervical cancer. Um, depending on what source you read, um, cervical cancer is in the top five um, of most common cancers in women worldwide. Um, some studies have it fourth, one we read has it second, 
close to 300 deaths per year um, worldwide. And again, the two most common um, types of HPV, I forgot the V, that uh, result in cancer is type 16 and type 18. And you will see these called HR HPVs, which is high risk. So let's talk a little bit about um, the virus. So here's um, an overview of the replication cycle. Um, what's really important to note is that um, replication, excuse me, and transcription happen in the nucleus. Okay. So nuclear transcription and replication. And I told you it only encodes eight genes and most of those are regulatory. So this virus is very dependent upon the host cell for replication machinery, for transcription machinery. Um, this is just a little illustration. So HPV is going to infect in um, the uh, skin layers through microabrasions. So little that you can't even see breaks in the skin that allows it to get down to this basal layer. The receptors um, that human papillomavirus uses um, is something called HSPG, which stands for heparin sulfate um, HSPG. Oh uh, gosh, glycoproteins. Um, why do I not have this? Sorry. I don't know why I didn't write out the word. Um. <coughs> oh, excuse my cold. Really, Lisa. No, oh, sorry, heparin sulfate proteoglycans. Oh, I knew that. Okay, heparin sulfate is the um, primary receptor, and this is a very common um, cell surface molecule showed here and shown here in um, this blue with squiggles. And then what happens? Um, when, <coughs> excuse me, oh, it was on the next page. Um, after uh, attachment to these receptors, there's this conformational change between the L1, L2 um, proteins that then allows um, the um, virus to um, become taken in by micropenocytosis. We saw this with Ebola. Um, and is going to help um, uncoat the capsid and release the genetic material in the nucleus. Um, there's also, <coughs> excuse me, um, a host right here proprotein convertase right here that leads to this conformational change and furin is a um, host protease um, that is involved, can be involved in this um, conformational change and we've seen furin uh, in Ebola and in influenza and it's also been shown to be involved in HIV maturation. So this host protease is pretty commonly used by um, viruses to allow for these conformational um, changes in the capsid. This interaction 
with um, other cell molecules like um, integrin allows for some downstream signaling which is going to allow for um, the micropenocytosis <clears throat> and then um, the, vas the vesicle is going to be um, taken to the nucleus. So here's the vesicle. Um, the HPV is going to get into the nucleus and the circle is, re is representing the DNA genome. <clears throat> Um, in the nucleus, we are going to have early gene transcription, late gene transcription, replication um, of the viral genome, <clears throat> but this happens in um, a manner that's dependent on the differentiation of the cell. So I will um, show you that in just a second. Here are some of the, um, or here are the, the main roles of the proteins um, expressed by HPV. And you note that this says high risk, so we do find that the proteins have slightly different um, functions, high risk to low risk, but basically uh, E1 and E2 are important in genome replication. Um, E2 is kind of an interesting protein. It is going to actually um, attach the viral genome to the host chromosome during mitosis so that we make sure, the virus makes sure, that as the cell divides, HPV genomes are going into each new um, daughter cell. You can see the other early proteins um, really are involved in cy cell cycle control, cell growth, and differentiation. Okay, and we'll talk about um, why that's important in a minute. And again, the late genes are the capsid proteins. So, um, human papillomavirus, the early gene expression, all I'm really going to say about it um, is that um, it has this common promoter that promotes expression of these early genes um, and I just show you this diagram. Um, it might be interesting to you that HPV uses alternative splicing to generate these different proteins. Um, and so this is from a paper that talks a lot about this and, and this is talking about um, some of the different um, proteins to help um, with alternative splicing. We're not going to get into these details. Um, another thing that I think is really interesting is only one strand of the DNA is transcribed. Ah, this pen. Okay, so all the genes are encoded on one strand. It is a double-stranded um, virus, and we call this circular genome an episome. <coughs> Excuse me. Oops. So this is what I was talking about with the um, differential expression of the genes, and this is pretty cool. So the cells or the virus is going to affect the basal, the bottom layer. So this is layers of your skin cells. Okay. Up here, this top layer where your skin is exposed to the environment is made up of primarily dead cells. Those are the ones that oops flake off. Okay. So HPV expresses uh, or infects down here and is expressing the blue genes E1 and E2. So this is to maintain genome um, to get them replicated. As the cells move up, what they're doing is they're differentiating to different types of skin cells, different types of the epidermal layer. And you can see that now more of the early genes are turned on. Um, 
E4 is turned on um, the last, so you've got E5, E6, E7, E4, so now we're <coughs> starting, excuse me, to express um, more of the genes important for now finally making capsid. So the purple is the capsid, so virus production is not made until the cells become um, very differentiated and actually are starting to go out of mitosis. So the viral genome can only replicate during mitosis. So the virus has to infect dividing cells in order to make more genome to be packaged to eventually make more virus. But then there's no point of the virus particles being made here because there's nowhere for them to go. So they actually don't aren't made until um, this later stage um, of cell differentiation and now these viruses here are on the skin's surface where they can be transmitted to the next host. So it's, I think it's a pretty cool um, regulation um, pathway. Um, some of these um, genes are also important for modulating the immune response so that these cells are not attacked. Um, so if you were, uh, if a, a wart was being made, it would start being made up here, um, and then be, um, the upper layer of that wart would be shedding virus. So warts are um, contagious, or what do I want to say? Warts do contain virus that can be spread, um, and Again, that's more common to have warts, even genital warts, than cancer. Um, so this is how HPV would be sexually spread. Um, there is, you can also have skin-skin contact for the low-risk um, HPVs. So again, in the upper, <coughs> excuse me, upper state or upper levels of the skin, you've got late gene expression, translation, virus assembly, and they're not sure if this, it causes lysis or it's just the breakdown of the skin that um, releases the virus. So the two proteins that we're most interested in is the early proteins E6 and E7. So E6 and E7 um, are essential for virus survival, and they are also the transforming proteins. So when we talk about transformation, we're talking about leading to cancer. So these are E6 and E7. And um, what I want you to see is that E. Oh, let me back up. Let me talk about this. What they found <coughs> in, <coughs> excuse me, about 80% of HPV cancers, there is integration of the HPV um, DNA. So that episome kind of opens up and integrates. Um, this leads to a defective genome. So this is cancer in cancer cells. What that means is this integration breaks that circle and it usually most commonly seems to break in the E2 gene. And I'll tell you why this is important in a minute. So the genome will break open and you've got part of E2 over here and part of E2 over here and now you have a defective genome. It can no longer produce virus um, but now it's going to be highly expressing lots of E6 and E7. And the issue with that is that E6 and E7 actually bind to some of our um, cancer suppressing um, cell health controlling proteins 
and this is what transforms or allows these cells to start replicating um, more times than they normally would, losing some of the control of checking, of cell cycle control, checking to make sure um, the DNA is not damaged. And so it's not E6 and E7 directly that cause cancer, but it's this increase in cell proliferation which allows for DNA damage to accumulate in the cell, which then leads um, to cancer. So E6 binds a host protein shown in green called P53. Um, P53 is a proto-oncogene, which means it normally works to keep the cell, um, in this case, P53 is important for um, promoting apoptosis when there's DNA damage. So if E6 is binding P53 and degrading it or preventing it from working, you prevent apoptosis, which means cells with DNA damage can go on and replicate. Hallmark of cancer. E7, on the other hand, binds retinoblastoma, RB. RB is a tumor suppressor. Okay, so its role is to natural, normally stop cell cycle and allow the cell to make sure everything's good before it goes on for cell division. So without that control, again, you can now have cells progressing through the cell cycle that have um, damaged DNA. And E7s from the high-risk um, um, HPVs can bind other tumor suppressors um, and, again, promote this cell cycle progression. The reason I mentioned E2 is important that it, um, or it's, that E2 is an important protein normally for <clears throat> HPV infection, and when it's um, defective, oops, let's not do that. One of the issues is that normally E2 helps control the level of um, E6, E7 replication. So early on, E2 is going to prevent uh, expression of the L2 capsids. Um, and yeah, this isn't a great picture for that, but and it's going to um, prevent expression of a lot of E6, E7. When you get rid of E2, you now get more E6, E7 being made. You get more capsid be made, but that's not really important anymore because you might not have virus uh, genome to um, replicate. But this increase in E6, E7 is now again <clears throat> further disrupting normal cell cycle um, controls and promoting that overproliferation, which is a hallmark um, of cancer. So. I just put this up here um, to remind you of P53's normal function. So normally it is activated when there's DNA damage, um, oncogenic signaling, oxidative stress, and it stops the cell cycle. Okay? And if the cell cycle is stopped, you either are getting DNA repair, um, senescence means the cell is no longer going to divide. Autophagy is when the cell kind of digests um, itself, and this can be part of programmed cell death, which is apoptosis. And you really want apoptosis to happen because this is nice, clean cell death. Necrosis can cause um, inflammation and other um, damages. Okay, so P53 has a super important role in normal cell function, and again, when Excuse me. You lose that um, p53. You now do not undergo apoptosis. Cell survives, and it can be a very defective cell. Um, this is just showing you how E2 seems to be the site of the episome breakage <clears throat> and integration. Retinoblastoma 
RB <clears throat> is a tumor suppressor that's shown here that's important for um, cell cycle arrest. And what happens normally in the cell is when the cell note uh, monitors that it's good, it's ready to go. Um, retinoblastoma is phosphorylated. It releases this transcription factor, E2F, and you get cell proliferation. So what's happening when E6, I'm sorry, when E7 is binding is you no longer have this, you have E7 binding retinoblastoma, and now the transcription factor E2F can keep stimulating um, cell cycle. So again, that's kind of shown here. Um, you get gene transcription, you get cell cycle activation. Uh, so this is just a little bit about the difference between low risk and um, high risk um, HPVs. Again, low risk associated with um, genital warts. Um, the main two types are 6 and 11. Why is this important? You will see when we talk about the vaccine in a couple minutes. Um, high risk, 16 and 18 account for 63%, uh, 66 percent <clears throat> of all cervical cancers and then these types um, are responsible for about another 10 percent. Again these numbers will be important when we talk about vaccines in a minute. So this is another diagram kind of looking at <coughs> excuse me, um, virus infection Right, so you've got virus infection in the lower um, basal cells, and you have differential virus expression, or a, a, yeah, gene expression, as you move through these layers, and eventually viral release. What's happening with um, cancer is you get this persistent infection. So um, I think it's something like 80% of people worldwide have been exposed to HPV at some point in their life, and we normally are able to clear it, right? So your immune system kicks in, clears the virus, um, doesn't cause any issues. This transformation to cancer, take a look at this, up to 20 years. So you could have been exposed in your 20s and not get cervical or penile or some kind of, um, you know, genital cancer until your 40s. So it can take a long time to uh, progress. They don't really talk about if you're infectious for 20 years. That doesn't seem to be the case. It just seems to be... Um, uh, the case um, when you have um, the low risk and um, viral shedding that you're, um, well, I don't know if it's even the low risk, but early on in the infect infection before integration is when you're um, more contagious. Most people don't know they have it. Um, so that's why it can be spread um, very easily. Right. And then this is showing you what happens with um, malignant cells in that they change shape, they grow on top of each other, they don't form um, these nice layers anymore. Okay, And it says you can't even get invasive carcinoma. Invasive carcinoma would be um, uh, something that's, um, oh, it metastasizes. Ooh, sorry. And you can see here, with cancer, it's the E6, E7 genes um, that are highly expressed. Oops, wrong way. All right, so again, I talked a little bit um, about the alpha and the beta. So the alpha is the mucosal ones, mainly through sexual contact. There's debate whether this can be... Um, <coughs> HPV can remain on fomites. So remember, fomites are an inanimate objects, a desk, a toilet, things like that. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
HPV does not cross the placenta, but um, during a vaginal birth, um, a child, if the mother is, has active HPV infection, um, it can lead to laryngeal, laryngeal papillomas, so little warts um, in the larynx area. So you don't want that. So um, if someone um, appears to have genital warts, um, they will usually do a C-section just to avoid passing on that virus. Beta HPV is the warts. So warts can be in on all parts of the skin. Um, plantar warts are on the foot. Um, you get, can get these little gross, and the treatment is usually doing something like <coughs> liquid nitrogen or chemical um, burn off. So these are not malignant, medically removed, but yes, they are contagious. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, here's the number I was thinking. 80% of people will get an HPV infection um, in their lifetime. Okay. Again, <clears throat> sexual contact, um, and this can be oral sex and anal sex and vaginal sex, um, can cause, they're seeing a higher rise in oropharyngeal cancer due to um, changes in oral sex practices. Um, here's your cervical cancer. Um, again, Here's the main type, 16 and 18, um, that cause uh, the, the cervical cancer. Um, good thing is we have a vaccine. So we have a way to prevent not only the spread of HPV, but the prevention of cancer. This is the key to this um, vaccine. And so what this is, is it's called a recombinant um, vaccine, or you might hear it called a subunit vaccine. So they take L1 genes, so they isolate it from the human papillomavirus, they put it in a plasmid, they can express it to high levels, the protein and yeast, it will self-assemble into a capsid virus-like particle. This is great. So your immune system um, can make antibodies to this capsid. Um, the newest one that came out in about 2014 is called Gardasil 9. Okay, and it has capsids, so it's going to have a whole bunch of different capsids against HPV, oh, this damn, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, 52, and 58. These are high-risk HPVs. Sorry. And it has capsids against um, 6 and 11, two of the low-risk, most common wart-causing types. <coughs> this is actually pretty new. Um, 2006, the Gardasil was just against 16, 18, 6, and 11. Um, so they're really improving. Remember, these make up another 10%. So it appears to be um, able to block about 80% of cancer-causing um, high-risk HPVs. You know, this vaccine just started in early 2000, so we're just now going to start getting data of how well this vaccine works. Remember, I told you that <coughs> um, cancer, HP, uh, HPV cancer can take up to 20 or more years to form. So the prevention is going to have to, um, or the efficacy, sorry, of the vaccine is going to take a long time. We got to wait till people have been sexually active, 
um, assuming they're getting exposed, and then um, look and see how many cases of things like cervical cancer we have in the future. <clears throat> so just a little bit of more why we care about this virus. HPV via the numbers, um, more than 90% of cervical cancers are caused by HPV. And I just want you to think about this for a second. This isn't cancer that you get from uh, smoking or going out in the sun. This is a sexually transmitted cancer. That's something to think about. Um, 79 million Americans have HPV. Um, we're recommending that 11 to 12 year olds get two doses of the HPV vaccine. Um, there's been a lot of controversy about this. Uh, even just the whole thing about, um, um, you know, anti-vaccinations, but parents said, well, you're, you're telling my kids then to go ahead and have sex because we're preventing a sexually transmitted disease. And that was, never the intention of um, the vaccine. And my children's healthcare provider never told them, hey, you're getting HPV vaccine, so if you wanna go have sex now, you probably won't get cancer. I mean, none of that um, has been part of the promotion. But again, um, vaccines are a very um, hot topic. And most of the time, your body clears an HPV um, infection within a couple of years. Again, number of cancers attributed to HPV. The big one is um, cervical. Um, females are in green, males are in blue, but um, oropharynx is um, coming um, right up there. So cancers that affect throat, base of tongue, um, tonsils. Six Reasons for, to get HPV vaccine. I just think it's interesting to see. I'm just showing you some of the information um, that was that is out there. So now you only need um, two doses. You can get them when they get their other normal vaccination. So it's not like an extra um, trip. Prevents cancer. Um, I like the same as the average attendance of a baseball game. HPV is common, and look at, they're saying that there's already a 71% drop of um, HPV, and HPV can be um, detected, well, women go in usually yearly um, for a pap smear, which is um, a taking of some of the cervical cells, um, looking at it under the microscope, looking to see if the cells look normal they look abnormal, um, then further tests are done and we can do PCR to look for HPV positive um, cells. So this is where they're, they're saying there's been a drop um, in HPV cancers and genital warts by reporting um, these infection numbers. HPV vaccination rates, <coughs> excuse me, um, just again, kind of interesting, um, lots of states, half of our country in the 50th and greater percent, um, but uh, nine states um, in less than 40% um, coverage. So I think just kind of interesting with the um, information out there and, and the issues people are having with vaccinations. And so just to kind of um, end this uh, talk, um, other viruses that can cause cancer. So the hepatitis B and hepatitis C viruses, um, there is a vaccine for hepatitis B and it has been also kind of advertised as a um, cancer prevention um, vaccine. We talked a little bit about hepatitis C, <coughs> that now there's some medication um, to cure that virus infection, um, but they do have the potential for um, um, the infection causing um, cancer of the liver. 
And I didn't find out exactly um, if it's hepatitis genes or it's um, due to uh, cell cycle control issues, which seems to be pretty common for a lot of these viruses, but you can see um, you get increased DNA damage. So, <coughs> um, <coughs> part of the issue with our immune response is our immune response to a virus can cause uh, tissue damage as well. So, it's kind of, um, I guess, unintended consequences of our immune system. Um, Epstein Barr virus, this is the mono mononucleosis virus um, that 80-90% um, of the world has been exposed to, but once in a while it can cause um, different types of lymphomas, lymphomas or B-cell um, blood cancers. <coughs> HPV is in the herpes um, virus family and it works very similar to um, HPV. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And that it causes cancer by um, turning on cellular oncogenes. Um, EBV turns on MYC, um, which turns on cell cycle, <clears throat> and it decreases the expression of BCL2, LL1, which is a tumor suppressor. So it kind of works the same way um, as E6, E7. <coughs> Again, viral um, proteins um, affecting host cell, um, sorry, uh, host cell proteins. Um, this, uh, I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, um, there's a researcher at Anschutz who is looking at the relationship between Burkitt lymphoma, uh, EBV infections, and malaria, and there seems to be an interaction with a protein produced by malaria and um, EBV a virus infection that leads to a very high percentage of young children getting this um, tumor, this, this tumor inside uh, their um, facial region. So not only not comfortable and causing disfiguration. Um, and so she's, she's trying to uh, look at this interaction. Um, unfortunately, Epstein-Barr virus is um, <clears throat> transmitted through breast milk. Um, so just kind of like what we talked about with Ebola, it's really hard to tell people not to breastfeed your children because um, of this, this risk if that's the only nutrition they have. Um, so pretty interesting research there. Um, <coughs> another Herpes virus, uh, human herpes virus 8, or Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes virus. Um, this is seen in a lot of people with um, who have gone on to develop AIDS. So normally we would clear this herpes virus. Um, but uh, if you have a, a deficient immune system, um, this sarcoma, it shows up as these purple lesions. Um, on the body um, and can also be, again, associated with Burkett's lymphoma. Um, so this herpes virus is spread um, sexually and, again, uh, highly associated with um, AIDS. Human T-cell uh, leukemia virus. <coughs> um, it causes cancer by actually affecting chromatin structure. So it changes the looping of your of the host cell chromatin so that genes that normally wouldn't be exposed for expression are now in um, euchromatin uh, um, um, form and this is a persistent f uh, infection and again a cancer of the blood causes uh, leukemia or um, lymphoma the newest one so this was just discovered in 2008 Oh, I know really nothing about it. Merkel cell polyoma um, virus. Um, it can cause a type of skin cancer. So this is another um, double-stranded DNA virus. What's interesting is this is part of um, our normal skin flora. 
So lots of people have this on their skin, but if the virus mutates, then it can integrate into the host cell and can activate host cell um, division. So what's interesting is, <coughs> if you, <coughs> excuse me, think about it, here's your skin being exposed to UV rays, right? that can cause mutations in your um, skin cells, but also mutations in this naturally occurring flora, virus, which the mutations to the virus can then lead to the virus integrating into your host cell chromosome, and I'm not making very good sketches here, um, and causing cancer. So if you're still looking for a virus, this looks like a pretty interesting one, and again, um, something fairly new. And then finally, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. We have um, HIV, and HIV doesn't directly cause cancer itself, but it does um, damage the immune system enough that viruses that people would normally um, be able to clear, like Kaposi's um, Oh my gosh, my brain. Um, sarcoma um, can then, uh, we can't clear the virus, and so then it can then cause cancer. So if you look up cancer-causing viruses, HIV is on the list. Again, it doesn't directly, but because it uh, depletes the immune system, you can't fight or get rid of some of these viruses that c can cause cancer. Blah. All right, I hope you got um, information, background information for HPV from that. Again, the big two proteins that we'll talk about in that primary literature paper are HP, uh, oh my gosh, yes, HPV, E6, and E7. All right, I will see you soon.